Today, I'm going to start a series of messages called Warning Signs. Warning Signs. Everybody say Warning Signs. Yeah. Everybody's looking for a sign. <laughs> um, I hear things like this all the time. God, if you're out there, I need a sign. Um, God, if, if you're real and you love me and you care about me, and if you're really speaking to me, God, give me a sign. I hear that all the time. Lord, if you're really calling me into the ministry, give me a sign. Well, today, here's your sign. Today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay, lay it out. Now, y'all listen to me. It's going to get hot in here. Um, I, I brought my preacher with me this morning, and um, I'm going to preach a word. And if you need a sign, you're going to get a sign. Watch this. God is not afraid of you asking for a sign. God's not afraid of you saying, Lord, I need a sign. Here's the problem. God is constantly putting signs in our path, roadblocks up in our path, barriers in our life, and the deal is we don't take heed to them. He gives us sign after sign after sign, but we do not listen. We do not see the sign. We go around them. We go over them, we, but you can't go through them. But God is constantly putting signs up in your life, warning signs. <laughs> do not park there. No parking any time. And lo and behold, people will say, well, it's only going to be for five minutes. And then you'll get a ticket, and then you'll blame God for your ticket. I don't know. You, you deserve a ticket. If you're in a no-parking zone and you get a ticket, you deserve it. It's time to quit candy-coating this stuff. You deserve If you're going to break the law, if you're going to go pat around the warning sign, and you're going to park in a place that you know it says no parking anytime, you're going to get a ticket. How many of y'all know that's true? How come we fuss about it? Say you see God, you see a sign that says dead end. This road closes, and lo and behold, I wonder how far I can go. <laughs> I see it all the time. There will people come up and they'll turn around in your driveway or whatever. It's watch it says dead end. You turn. Don't go this way. Dead end. Do not enter. I wonder if I find one that says wet paint, because y'all know. He's got one. Man, his coach has got one. He's got every sign going. These are legal signs, by the way. Uh, this is going to be a real quick message for Haywood Reiner. He did not steal these signs. He bought these signs, and they were given to him. So uh, it may have been in Tennessee and Arkansas, but it don't matter. It wasn't in Kentucky. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, but anyway, yeah. But check this out. We, we see the signs. Yield. Stop. Wrong way. Do not enter. Don't go that way. God is constantly, constantly Put signs in our path. The question is, here's the big question. Are you going to take heed to the signs that God has already put in your life and quit asking God, here, where's my sign? Are you going to notice the signs that God has already put in your path? Here's the thing. Psalm 74, verse 9. You don't have to turn. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. That's going to be where I'm taking my text from today. But let me read this to you. Psalm 74, verse 9 says, We see not our signs. These people... God put sign after sign in their life, and they finally stood up and said, you know, God, we see not our signs. We don't see these signs. So today, my challenge, my job, that the word I'm going to give you today is this. It's called warning signs. It's a good word. It's a prophetic word. It's straight from the Bible. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. If you're there, say amen. Turn your never give them a high five and say, here's your sign. Come on, here's your sign. Yeah. Here's your sign. It's going, to be a, it's going to be a fun series, but also it's going to be an interesting series. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. reads like this. Enter through the narrow gate. Listen to me. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to what? Destruction. Wide is the path. Wide is the road that leads to destruction. Watch what it says. And many, many enter through it. Many people enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life. And watch what it says. Only a few, very few, find this narrow road that I'm talking about, this small path, this beaten path. Very few people find this path. See, there's two roads, two paths that you're on right now. Y'all watch me. Listen to me very carefully, because I'm preaching in a minute, but I'm going to set a foundation before I break the word. There's a narrow path. Everybody say narrow path. This path is not popular. It's, a, it's not a popular path. It's not an easy path. This path is only taken by a few. 
It's not traveled a lot. <laughs> this path, sometimes you have to stand all alone by yourself. Sometimes you've got to stand up when the whole tribe is against you. The whole school is against you. The whole church is mocking you. <laughs> you've got to stand up and you've got to do what God has called you to do. This is not an easy path. This is not an easy road and few people take it. I, 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 I wrote this down. This path leads to God's plan. If you're looking for God's plan, you're going to have to go the narrow way. You're going to have to take a path that is less traveled. You're going to have to stand up when everybody else cows down. You're going to have to stand for righteousness when this old world is standing for unrighteousness. You're going to have to stand on the truth and not waver from the truth. You're going to have to stand on the Bible when everybody else will give you another scripture that's going to try to contradict, contradict what that one says. You've got to stand for righteousness. This path I wrote down has the footprints of Jesus. I want you all to write that down. This narrow path that is only taken by a few. God said, I sought for a man, but I didn't find any. You know why? Because very few people, just to be honest with you, and there's been times in my life I wanted to go the wide path, the easy way, and I didn't stand in the narrow path. The second one is the broad, the wide path. This path is paved with the pleasures of the world. This path, is, it's easy. <laughs> it's a compromising path. I hear this all the time. Everybody else is doing it, so why can't I? That's a compromising path. That path, everybody's taking it. You're with the crowd in this path, and it leads to destruction, and it leads you. Watch me. If you go the wide way, if you don't take the narrow path, this wide path will separate you from God. This wide path that everybody else has taken, you're being a world follower and not a world changer. Oh, that's a good word. You're being a world follower but not a word changer. See, the narrow path is based upon the authority and the word of God. Hallelujah. This wide path that everybody's taking is taken from the worldly standards. If everybody else is doing it, it's okay. Well, she deserved it. He deserved it. My, I was brought up wrong, wrong side of the track, different pedigree, all these things. You can justify your life, lifestyle and take the wide path, but I promise you this, according to the Bible, it's destruction. See, this pastor believes in holiness. This pastor that's in front of you, I should have been the poster child. <laughs> I should have been the one that the head says, don't follow Brian Keith Rafferty. So what I am preaching to you this morning, I know because I have been there. We know in our minds what is right. We know that the Word of God, and that is what the scary part about Camelsville, Kentucky, the Bible Belt, Central Kentucky, is that we go to church, we know the Bible, but here's the deal. Sign after sign, don't go there. Yield, dead end, do not enter, no parking, stop, wrong way. We know it, but we, didn't, we, 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 we go around it. We go around the truth. And the truth is the only thing, if applied to your life, that will set you free. The truth so at some point in your life, y'all listen to me, at some point in your life, you've got to say, this is right. I know what I'm doing is destruction. I am killing myself. And you've got to make your mind up. If I am the only one, hallelujah, that will go down this path, if God be for me, who can be against me? If I go down this path... It don't matter with the world, the church. It don't matter about anything. I know it's right because God said it. He's the authority. He's right. Everybody else is wrong. And if I got to be like Elijah and stand up against 450 prophets of Baal in Camelsville, I'll stand up, I'll march that road, and I will not look back. I will not look to my left or to my right. I stand on the authority of God. Somebody praise him this morning. The narrow path, less traveled. The wide path is following the crowd. You just, you want people to like you. If all you've got is yes men in your life, you have no true friends in your life. You must have some rope holders that will build character in your life. Listen to this. Before, let me set this down before I get into the word. If you get on the wide path, I've been there. How many of y'all been there? Why don't y'all lie? You say, well, I believe in eternal security of the believer, and I believe this, that, and the other. Quit lying. <laughs> uh, I've been on the wide path. I, I've, I've done wrong things in my life, and some of you here today are still no parking. 
dead end. God is throwing sign after sign after sign up in your life. And here you are today. It's decision time. But before I go far, listen to me. If you're going in the wrong direction, here's what's going to happen. You'll have to go over or around some warning signs in your life if you've got God in your life. Y'all listen to me. If you don't have God in your life, Satan's got you. He don't care if you smoke a joint or not. He don't care if you get drunk or not. He's got you. But what I'm trying to tell the church, if you've got a God fearing walk with the lord you know better because his heart will sit there and start beating and you'll say oh i can't do this no more i got to get away from these type of people i've got something in me that the world can't give me there's a warning sign don't go there so before you get in trouble this is a good word today i feel the lord already mm. it's gonna get hot it's gonna be good though it's gonna get ripe and it's gonna be tight before you go the wide path and veer off the narrow road, you'll have to go through these warning signs. Listen to me. Very important word today. I've got to give it to you. Two warning signs God has placed in your life. No doubt. These are two warning signs that God has placed in your life. And you need to listen to them today. Number one warning sign that God has placed in your life today is the church. Listen to me. Every sermon you hear preached I do not get up here. I say this all the time, but I've got to tell you again. I do not get up here for money. I do not get up here for a hand clap. I do not get up here for a light show or performance. I put my life into this word. I study hard to show myself approved. When I get up here to preach a word, there is a purpose behind every word that proceeds from my mouth. This praise team does not get up here before money. This praise team does not get up here for lights and performance. This praise team, every song that is sung, oh, glorious day, oh, I'm living right. You know, they got a purpose behind everything that they do. Here at Elkhorn, we're not a light show church. As you can tell, we have church in a barn. <laughs> it looked good this morning, old, didn't it? We have, we have a cross in the center of this church because everything you say, right, who put that there? God did. Everything we do is the center of this church is the cross. Everything that comes from this church is the center of the cross, and we go out. We go outward. I would much rather have church in a barn filled with people that love God than a $2 million sanctuary that they don't love the Lord at all. Just for the church, just for the building, I'm out. I want Jesus. So what I'm telling you today, there's a reason you're here today. That's why it's so important. I want y'all to listen to me. So important, you stay still. Listen to me. I'm going to take my heart out this morning and preach to you. Somebody beside you may be lost and dying and going straight to hell right now, sitting beside you or in front of you or behind you. What if you were so much of a distraction for that person, they missed their calling today? Up, down, bathroom, here, that, uh, Xbox, whatever. You say, Brian, that's mean. I'm telling you the truth this morning. There is a reason you're here. You're not here to get a check mark beside your name, church. You're not here to say, oh, God, I went to church today. I'm good for the rest of the week. How does that work for you? It don't work at all. I'm telling you, the religious side of church does not work. But give me Jesus, and that works every time. That's why it's important while you're here, worship Him. You don't know if you'll be back tonight. Worship Him. There's a reason. See, there's a, God will send a preacher. God will send a song. God will send a word, a message, a testimony. And all of a sudden, you'll look at them and say, Dude, they, they've been checking my mail. They've been looking in my mailbox. They know what's going on. No, listen to me. That is the Holy Spirit in that individual working on your behalf, putting a warning sign up in your life that you can look at it and say, wow, God still loves me. God still got a plan for me. A warning sign is a good sign, hallelujah. A warning sign is saying, hey, i am not forgotten about you. Warning, don't go there. Don't do that. Don't hang out with those people. It's important. It's very, very important. So God will put warning signs in your life because he loves you. This is a true story. A teenager and his girlfriend decided to go for a swim in the neighbor's pool. 
But the problem was the, the neighbors were gone on vacation that weekend. As they approached the fence, they seen a sign that warns them, keep out of pool. Ding, 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 ding. Keep out of pool. But they climbed straight over the fence, ignoring the warning sign. The pool now is 10 feet away from the, this boyfriend and his girlfriend. All of a sudden, they're 10 feet away from the pool. They're standing beside a second warning sign. Keep out of pool. And listen to this. He runs past the sign. He says, he cries out, says, watch this. He runs to the diving board. He springs into the air. And as he leaps into the air, the girl screams, no! No! The boy dives head first into the pool, not realizing the pool had been drained. True story. The pool had been drained. The young man dove to his death, ignoring warning signs. Now listen to him. I'm going to get a little old-fashioned here on you today. Is that all right with you guys? To get some good old, old-fashioned preaching here just for a little bit. Listen to me. There is something called in the Bible, a sin unto death. It, you don't hear preaching like this much because people say, well, that's just mean preaching. No, listen to me. I, I say this all the time. I'd much rather you hate me and go to heaven and love me and go to hell. I'd much rather, warning sign, warning, warning. Y'all remember Will Robertson? Y'all remember that? Warning Will Robertson, warning Will Robertson. Y'all remember that? If you don't, you're probably under the age of my age. Anyway, <laughs> warning. He had danger, danger. Will Robertson, turn around you. And I'm so thankful. I've heard this theology before. Y'all ready for this? God don't allow U-turns. Have y'all ever heard that? I've even seen cars with stickers on the back. God don't allow U-turns. That is a lie from hell. You wouldn't be here today if God didn't allow some U-turns in your life. How many of you are thankful this morning we got a God? When you're going down the wrong road, warning, warning, you turn You've turned your life around. And I look at a lot of people today, right here under my teaching, I see a lot of U-turns in this church. But I praise God for some U-turn Christians. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, he allows you turn. Yes, he died for your sin. Yes, you are forgiven. But I'm telling you, some of you right now, the signs are going off like crazy, 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 crazy. And you're ignoring it. You're on the diving board. Boing, boing, boing. There you are, no water under you. Water means the Holy Spirit in the Bible. See, the Holy Spirit, this is a good word. The Holy Spirit will catch you no matter where you're at as long as you dive into his presence. My God. You better be careful where you, who you're diving with. You better be careful who you're riding with. You better be careful who you're, who you're with in your life. Because I'm telling you, wherever you dive, either the spirit of water will catch you or you'll be a DOA, dead on arrival. Will, this is a tough sermon, but it's truth. I, Camelsville needs to hear this sermon. America needs to hear this sermon. I call holiness back into the church. I call right living back into the church. I call if you messed up, and you drugged up, and you doped up, I'm telling you, God will allow you to make a U-turn today right here where you're at. Don't miss the warning signs. I pray that we never forget, and I think this is the biggest problem with churches today. Here's the problem. The danger about coming to church all the time is that you become insensitive. You become insensitive to the moving of the Holy Spirit. You say, well, it's, it's for them, and it's not for me. Where is a verse in the Bible that proves your theology? We get insensitive to when God is moving. We all of a sudden, we tune him out. How many of y'all, and I've done this before, you've been in a church service before, and the preacher was preaching, but you're playing tic-tac-toe. Come on. See, this is the, this is the Christianity, the raw, one-on-one, -on -one basic Christianity. We're wanting eschatology and a study of Revelation, and we don't even have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John down. Well, preacher, I'm, I'm ready to go deep. How many people have you led to the Lord? That's deep. People wanting to be on leadership, they're not even faithful. Excuse me. When I come once a month, I come on Sundays. No, I'm looking for people that are sold out 
and will swing over hell on a wet noodle and say, boo with the devil. Hallelujah. I'm looking at, for people that's in God's army that will stand up when the going gets tough and the tough gets going. They won't back down, cower down. They'll say, bring it on. Hallelujah. That's what I'm looking for. My prayers will never forget our salvation. My prayers that we'll never lose our zeal in our fire, in our passion for God. You say, well, I'm not wired like that. That is the most lame excuse. You've got dynamite in you. The same Holy Spirit that I've got in me, you've got in you. But you're sitting and telling me you can't give God a shout. But you'll give people with spandex on. You'll stand up on a table and clap your hands and watch the Dallas Cowboys go up and down the field. Woo! I told you! I told you guys! Some of y'all look at me like, it's the truth. How many of y'all want truth? I, I mean, how many of you guys really say, Brian, I don't like it. You make me mad. Well, y'all make me mad. I make myself mad. <laughs> Sometimes I fuss at myself. I look in the mirror and say, you dumb, boy, you dumb. Them highlights done burned your scalp. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get mad at myself. I get upset at myself. But that will never replace how much I love you. And I love you enough to tell you the truth. And I'm telling you this morning, God has designed the church to be so winning, life standing station. That, man, that we are changing lives because God is in us. Why are we growing? It's not because of the preaching or the singing. It's because you're listening to God. You're listening to God. May we never lose our zeal. Second point, and I'm done, believe it or not. I don't know how long I go on the second point. But at least I'm on my last point. First thing God puts in your life is the church. See, the preaching and the singing may not get to you. But this next point I'm getting ready to tell you, you better not ever lose this one. It's your conscience. I wept over this point this week. Because there's been times when after I preach this point, you'll, you'll connect with this point. See, before God will allow you to go into destruction, go the wrong way, he'll place another warning sign in your path called your God conscience. Oh, if I could just get this in your spirit this morning, this is the most powerful song or sign that, that I could give you. Everybody will have to deal with this sign. This is a sign right now everybody 100% is dealing with right now, the conscience. See, the conscience is a, is a greater preacher than Billy Graham. The conscience is a greater preacher than T.D. Jakes. Your God conscience is a greater preacher than Jensen Franklin or James Merritt, all these big, profound pastors. Your God conscience is the greatest teacher, the greatest sign that you'll ever have in your life. And that God conscience is the Holy Spirit that lives within you. He lives within you. Listen, you can't go in destruction or the wrong way or the wrong direction, or the danger zone, without God doing this, screaming, screaming, screaming in your head. You cannot, y'all listen to me, here's going to be your first response to know you've got a good relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're with the wrong person, in the wrong relationship, with the wrong whatever, going the wrong direction, wrong place, wrong party, Wrong back seat on a Friday night. Your Holy Spirit, God conscious, will do this. Stop. Stop. Go, don't go there. Don't do that. He will scream at you. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You can walk in a place and you know you're with the wrong person, wrong party, wrong group, wrong situation, and all of a sudden your, your God conscious will scream at you. That is a sign. And listen, I'm getting ready to go deeper with you. Y'all ready to say amen? He will scream at you. He will scream at you at first. And listen to me. If you continue to go down the wide path, the wide road, everybody else is doing it, I'll do it. Everybody else is talking like it, I'll talk like it. I'm telling you, listen, here's what's going to happen. Here's the best example I can give you. 
If you're living right with God, your God conscience will scream at you. No matter where you're at, He'll scream at you. You can have a Bud Light in your hand, and He'll scream at you. You say, Brian, how do you know? Because I'm going to be honest with you. I told the first service, and I'm going to tell you the same thing. I struggled on this, this, this point right here because it hit home with me. I was 21 years old. I went through my prime. I went through life. I, I, was, I was the youth president of my youth group. I know y'all can't believe it either, but I was. I, I lived a good, decent life. I preached my first sermon at 14, and I, everything was going good. But at the age of 21, I went to a party. I want y'all to listen to me. I went to a party, and I knew driving to that party out in the field, I knew it was wrong. I was in the car, sitting in the car, and boy, I was over there, and my God conscience was going, don't go, don't go, don't, don't do that, don't go there. And listen, I'm telling, I'm taking out my heart this morning, and I'm sitting it right here on this, on this pulpit. This is not easy, because it's going to be close to 600 people, both services here today. This is not easy at all. But here's why I'm telling you this, because I'm trying to make a point to you. If I can hold, throw a warning sign up before you make a crazy mistake... I've done what God has accomplished me, wanting me to do today. So listen to me. If you're sitting there right now going like this, dude, listen to me. I'm being honest. God is screaming right now. I want more of you. I want more of you. I just don't want you Sunday mornings. My God, I want, when they say amen, the benediction, and the, the altar call has been said, when you walk out, I want more of you. I was in that field. One of my friends hand me a Bud Light. A Bud Light. And there I was with a Bud Light in my hand. And Bobby, I'm ashamed. And I'm sorry because I feel I've let you down. Even in that field, my God conscience was going, what would your granny say? My granny would have beat Jesus in me. <laughs> My mama lied to her, lied to people. Oh, what are you doing? I'm just going out tonight. Bull butter. I went to a field where there was a party and there was a Bud Light in my hand. And at that moment, the biggest spiritual battle I had outside of my salvation, I went through it at that moment. I, I'm not lying to you. You can make fun of me all you want. I literally... Felt the presence of God telling me, take me back to God. Take me back to God. I don't belong here. I don't like it here. You don't belong here. Take me back to God. And I'm telling you, at that moment, God gave me a free will. And that free will will get you in trouble. I went through the warning sign. I got on the high dive. And I started jumping with a Bud Light in my hand. Thought everything was good. Everybody was laughing, cutting up with me. And nobody tried to even stop me, but God, he was putting warning signs. And here was the problem. Y'all ready? Powerful. Listen to me. Y'all got me to say amen. Here's what happened. I drank that first beer. Then my second beer. Then my third beer. Then I couldn't get in the car because i never done that before. Then I had to go home. It's bad. I can tell you more. But anyway, here's what started happening. The scream, Dana. Don't do it. Don't drink it. Started going like this. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't run. Don't do it. 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 Take me back to God. Take me back to God. That scream became a whisper. Boy, it's this preacher right here. That scream that when I was in trouble, don't do it, don't smoke it, don't go there, don't have sex. You say, Brian, don't talk about that stuff. Listen to me very carefully. This pastor believes and knows that it's about sin. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Sin will make you buy and stay longer than you want to stay. That's the problem with the church. They don't talk about it, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. We're going to talk about it a little bit. That's the problem with the world. They, they know the truth. They know the warning signs. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's why teenagers today, half of them that get pregnant have abortions. Truth. Truth. Now, I hear this old lie all the time. 
They said, well, Brian, as long as I think about it in my mind, I'm okay. Watch this. That's a lie. Are, y- are y'all getting this? Please just go. Something. Move. Shake yourself if you've got to shake yourself. But I'm telling you, people say all the time, well, I'm thinking it, but I'm not saying it, so it don't matter. Listen to me very carefully. I'm going to teach you a good doctrine. God says, I am more concerned about your heart than I am your outer appearance. If you think about a woman and you lust after her, uh uh-oh, you've committed spiritual adultery. Gosh, see, God's standards are so much higher than my standards. And we end up compromising and justifying and going places and doing things and going through the warning signs. And God's like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And that scream, some of you, you don't hear a scream no more. A sermon didn't get to you. A song can't get to you. But I'm just more concerned about your God conscience this morning. Because if you keep going through the sign, you'll end up on a high dive. And you're going to dive into a situation that's over your head. (laughs) And you're going to hit concrete. You're going to run into a dead-end street, a wall in your life that God's sitting there going, I'm telling you, that, play, that person you're with is a dead end. Let me give you all some help. You all ready? Here's the deal. If you are with somebody who will not work, and all they do is play Xbox every, all day, do not come to me and ask me to do your wedding. If they're not working before you marry them, they're not going to work when you get married. Watch this. Dead end. Sure, I'm trying to help you out, parents. If you come to church and you got a mini skirt on and you can't bend over and touch your ankles and you're having a crack attack, you need to put some clothes on. That's the truth. You may not like it, but it's the truth. I'm calling holiness back in the house. And let, me, let me go ahead and tell you something. I'm going to really get down on this one. Parents, be parents. Do not bring your child to my office. I can't do nothing with them. Because I'm going to hand you a good, good old limb. And I'm not going to call law on you. I'm going to go say, take them behind the Holy God woodshed and wear their blessed assurance out. You are the parents. They're not. You are responsible. They're not. Oh. Be a kid while you're a kid. Don't worry about all that stinking dating. Be a kid. Put clothes on. No more crack attacks. I see the adults now. Somebody's going. Y'all are so funny. (laughs) Man. You say, Brian, how do I have that? You get a mirror. Before you leave your house. I never thought I'd preach like this. And you stand in front of it, and, and you bend over. And if you look behind and go, whoa, mama, put the clothes on. And if your soul sisters are, pull it up. Uh, we may not sell too many CDs on this one. But I'm telling you the truth. You have a God conscious in you. And women, I'm being nice. I really am being really nice. You know what you're doing. I'm going to leave it there. Because God said so. Please. If you wouldn't wear it in front of Jesus and sit down at the table with the Lord. You say, Brian, I'm going on a date. 
I'm going to tell you right now, if my daughter brings a young man in my house and his pants are dragging the floor, I'm going to give him a belt, my belt, and I won't, I won't. I'm going to hand it to him, and that was Destiny. Is she here? You are not. You, in the name of Jesus, you will not bring a bum, a low life in the house. He's going to be God-fearing man. He's going to love you, and he's going to bring the best out of your life. Right. I prophesy that. And what about, I know it's, I'm going on, but that's okay. If a boy will come to your house and not come in the house and introduce himself. All right, boys, I'm trying to help y'all. If you will not come to the house and say, hey, I'm so-and-so. May I take your daughter out tonight? You say, Brian, that's just old-fashioned. I'm telling you, that's just called honor and respect. I'm just wondering this morning, how many of you can hear God scream? Right now, you may be sitting under my teaching. Can you hear God scream? Wrong way! Stop! Yield! Dead end! Don't go that way! It's a dead end! Do not enter that relationship. Do not go with that person. I did not design that person to be with you. No parking. Wet paint. If you go down the road of destruction, you'll have to go over to the screaming voice of God. And I praise God this morning, I can still hear the screaming voice of God. That when I do wrong and my attitude pops up, God automatically, I'm talking it don't take days, it don't take minutes. I'm telling you, at that moment, God screams, says, Brian, that's not my mind. I don't talk like that. I don't act like that. And I hear his voice screaming. See, you may have not got the preaching, the praise and worship today, but now you're going to have to make a decision. Are you going to ignore the screaming voice of God and go through the warning sign and get on a high dive and jump into something that you're not prepared to handle. What a great, profound word for this church today. You say, Brian, I didn't get it because you don't want it. If you want it, come and get it. I'm looking for a church that will get on a high dive and jump into the presence of God. I'm looking for a church that's going to rise up in this last hour and say, blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking for teenagers to rise up and I call purity and honesty and virginity back over your life. I'm looking for adults that will just jump into the presence of God. Two warning signs. The church and your conscience.